So our topic today is inconsistency observed by Maxwell in Ampere's circuital law. Now this topic is quite confusing for most of the students. So let me explain it in details. So I am sure once you watch this video till the end, the confusion will be clear. Now, first thing is, what is Ampere's circuital law? So, in, mathematically, it's integration of d dot dl is equal to mu naught i. Now, we all know this is a closed integration. So, this closed integration is, we have to do along a closed loop. First thing is that, second thing is mu naught into i. Now, what is i? Now, here we have to understand clearly about this i, the current and the integration. Okay. Now, this i is the current. It is the total current through the surface So this much we all remember, but what you have to remember more is total current through the surface of which the closed loop, that is the closed loop in which we have done the integration, the closed loop is the perimeter. So this means the integration has to be done in a closed loop that we know but the closed loop has to be a perimeter of the surface through which this current passes. This is important. Okay? Unless you are clear about these points, you will find this confusing. Okay? Now Maxwell applied this circuital law, that is Ampere circuital law, to find the magnetic field at a point during charging of a capacitor. So now let's go to that. Say we are charging this capacitor from this battery. Initially there is no charge in the capacitor. When we switch this on, then current will flow from here to here. It has no charge in it, so there is no potential here, but there is an EMF connected, so charge will flow through this to the display. Display will become positive, this becomes negative, this we all know. The thing is, during the charging process, when some current flows through this, at that point, Maxwell wanted to find the magnetic field at this point, say we call it P, which is at a distance R from this wire. So you wanted to find the magnetic field at P during charging of the capacitor. Okay, when there is a current flowing in the circuit. For this he applied Ampere circuital law by using two different surfaces. One surface is, let's call it surface 1, which is a disk like surface, which is a disk like surface. Okay. Now, he put the disk here like this. So, in the diagram, you can draw it like this. This is the disk. To make it simpler to understand, let me use some objects to demonstrate this. So, say, this is, a, this is one plate of the capacitor. This is the second plate of the capacitor. So, this is made of paper right now. Okay, say, this is of metal. This is a metal sheet. So, 
this forms a capacitor. Now we don't need this, so let me remove this. So this one said this plate of the capacitor. So Maxwell wanted to find the magnetic field at a point here, say at a distance r from this wire, from this wire. So he first used a surface which is this like. So he put it perpendicularly like this. So say this is the surface we are talking about and so point P is here this is so you want to find the magnetic field this is a point P here so this surface we have taken so easy, we can see easily that the current for the surface is I see this current this wire is spreading this is passing through this so current for this surface is I, we have to integrate it along the perimeter. This is the perimeter of the surface. So what we get is, from this equation, see, this is surface 1. So when Maxwell applied this Ampere's equation on this surface, he saw that current through the surface is I. See current I is passing through the surface. Okay. So that current is non-zero during charging of the capacitor. Mu naught is not zero. DL is not zero which is a length. So obviously when these three are non-zero then B is non-zero. So B is not zero it will have some value. Clear? Maxwell then applied a second surface, let's call it surface 2. So this is surface 2. He used a surface which is like a tiffin box. This is the second surface he used. Now here, this is like a tiffin box and if you notice something, its perimeter is same as the perimeter of this. That means the perimeter of surface 2 is same as perimeter of surface 1. Okay? Obviously, see this is a disk, so this is a perimeter, this is a surface. This is the surface, so this is the perimeter, okay. Now what Maxwell did was, he placed this on this capacitor like this. Okay, so he placed this in between this, so like this. So in the diagram, we draw it like this. So this is the tipping box like shape. Okay. Now see what happens is this is the capacitor plate, this is the surface, now see the current is not passing through the surface, it's coming to the positive plate, there is no current in between, as per Ampere's Edwards convention, there is no current here, so surface is like this and the capacitor plate is like this, so there is no current through the surface. So in this situation, that is, in this surface, when we apply ampere circuital law, we saw that here dl is not zero, mu naught is not zero, but i is zero, because there is no current through the surface. So if it is zero, then this quantity becomes zero, 
So obviously, since dl is not 0, so b has to be 0. Clear? So what happened? What did he observe? He observed that if he takes a surface like this, b comes out to be 0, and if he takes a surface like this, b is not 0 for the same point. Clear? So that is the inconsistency of Ampere's orbital law. Maxwell realized that there is something missing in Ampere's orbital law. He introduced the concept of displacement current. To remove the inconsistency, he modified this Ampere circuital law and he said the law should be like this mu naught i plus id, where id is the displacement current, and this is the conventional current we, we have been using from before. So, let's call it conduction current because the current through the conductor is due to conduction of the electron. So the conventional current is called here IC plus this is term displacement current. So, so this is the way this equation Ampere's circuital law has been modified by Maxwell. So this equation is called Ampere Maxwell law equation of Ampere-Maxwell law. Sorry, Ampere-Maxwell law. Clear? Now, let me clear up few more confusions. First thing, this is called displacement current. By the word displacement, we usually understand when some object is moved from this place to that place, so this is a displacement. But here, no object is moving, yet the word displacement is used here. That what students find confusing. And yes, it is confusing. What happened is, in early days, electric field, electric field was also called electric displacement in early days. Maxwell from that used the word displacement to name it displacement current. So don't worry about this displacement, how it has come. Displacement means this. There is no displacement like this in this situation. Don't worry about that. Just memorize that this is called displacement current. Okay? Next is current. Now, so Maxwell said in the space between the plates of the capacitor, there is a current flowing and that current we call displacement current and the current flowing through the wire is the conduction current IC. Okay? Now he said this IC and ID they form a continuous loop. In the sense, when we switch on this battery, current IC flows through this. In this space, there is no IC, there is only ID current. Here again, IC current flows through the wire. So IC plus ID gives us a continuity in the circuit. This is a point to be understood. Okay. Then he Maxwell say when the capacitor is getting charged, that is during charging of the capacitor, the electric field here keeps changing. Since the electric field here keeps changing, so electric flux in this region keeps changing. And that change in electric flux produces displacement current. So he gave a formula which says 
the displacement current ID is equal to epsilon naught d phi e by dt. That is epsilon naught multiplied by rate of change of the electric flux with respect to time. So this ID is equal to this, this you have to remember. Okay? Clear? So another point which you should understand and remember is that say if a particular instant the current here is 0 0.2 ampere the IC is 0 0.2 ampere then at that point the ID will also be 0 0.2 ampere that is if the charging current is 0 0.2 ampere the current flowing through this the displacement current flowing through this will also be 0 0.2 ampere clear? on this part of the circuit there is only conduction current no displacement current in this region there is only displacement current no conduction current in this part there is only conduction current no displacement current okay and their values are same so 0.2 ampere here in IC 0.2 ampere here ID 0.2 ampere here IC so see, see it's there is a continuity here clear so this is the concept of displacement current don't confuse the word displacement with the displacement of mechanics this displacement comes from the electric field so you just remember he named it displacement current Maxwell named it as displacement current we have to remember it as displacement current and its value is given by this equation clear? I hope it's clear now if you have any question please write in the comment part of this video then I will answer it back okay and if you like this video please click on like in the video and subscribe to my channel